having created our form here, we now have uh, a chance to uh, enjoy the process of, of putting a face on this and making it a face jug. So, um, and here I have um, another form waiting for a face. So we can just take a look at these two here and just start with a basic idea. If you were to put the face, you could put the face way down low here like this. And if you did that, if you put a face down low like that, you get this really high forehead, which kind of starts to look a little bit like almost an alien, which is a choice. You can, you know, that big forehead kind of look thing, it, it looks more alien. Um, a traditional um, face might be right in the center. Have a, that would be more of a natural looking face where the eyes end up right in the middle of the head. Um, so that's another option. And then you can do something a little bit more elongated where you put the eyes up higher um, like that. And then what you end up with is something that looks almost um, more uh, like the African masks and African sculpture, which is actually the origins of these face jugs. So maybe we'll play with something like that. So for this first one, I thought I'd make uh, something more along the lines of the traditional face jugs that you see when you look at um, some of the original antiques. So we'll start by um, maybe locating a couple of eyes. And I'm just going to try to stay pretty close to the process of um, making a, a simple form here. So eyes will go maybe one here, maybe a little bit lower and one here because we'll maybe put on some brows and then there'll be a nose here and perhaps uh, we'll put the mouth down about here. So I'm just kind of scoring these ideas out and laying them here for us to consider. And then for the eyes, again, if you've looked at some of the examples online, you will have noticed that there are um, some eyes that start with uh, light colored clay. And uh, so they have like a porcelain clay or a white clay um, that they use for the eyeball. So I thought maybe we would uh, start with that. And uh, I'm gonna make this just, I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger and you'll see why as we go along here. So here, is um, an eyeball, two eyeballs, and we'll score these very simply. And having scored these and scored that, we'll, we'll apply some slip. And the earliest um, face jugs um, have a real direct, simple, almost childlike quality. So I find it very refreshing and kind of liberating so that you don't have to worry about, well, I'm not, you know, I don't know much about faces or how to sculpt them. Um, you can just kind of let your child, childlike ability to, to just put your, your, um, yourself at the mercy of just kind of spontaneously responding to a very simple idea. So here we have these larger, uh, these eyeball forms here. And then the um, way that they appear to be made from here is that the, a coil is kind of crafted here and then placed around, around the eyeball. And then this is just worked into the pot from the outside. Join that a little bit. And I don't want to get it too close to the ball. I just want that, that kind of kind of faux lid. I could if I wanted, it might be getting a little too fancy, but kind of give it a little bit of an angle here to give it a little bit more of a an almond shape rather than a complete round. And already that would be me starting to um, influence things towards uh, a more sculptural outcome, which is probably not what we're after. So here is the other one. So you can see I have one eyeball done and I'm putting on the next coil here. 
and I'm just pushing this down. So this this approach is like I say, it's it's very direct, very simple, very childlike. And I believe that in some of the videos that I've provided for you uh, with other people making these these uh, face jugs, you can see some people working like this. And then the next step would be the nose, um, perhaps, or a brow. We could do a nose or we could do the brows. Let's put the brows in here. Um, and we're just going to, again, score everything as we go along. And the brows seem to be just placed on, on the pot. Now again, this is the, um, the pot that we made by putting two kind of pancakes together. So it is a very direct method. And, um, and it's also uh, a great way to practice uh, making faces. So I'm going to just push this brow in here, make sure we get a good join all the way around. But we're just we're just using this um, as a kind of a, a way to. It's almost like a, a an advanced 3D sketchbook here. We're just practicing and and trying out things, and so you can try absolutely anything out because it didn't it doesn't take all that long to make one of these pots, one of these little kind of pancake pots. So you can go ahead and experiment with it. So there's a brow, and I'll make one more. Could work on a unibrow if we wanted, but uh, I think I'm just going to go with uh, one more brow here. So, and after I do this one, I'll start on the second one to show you perhaps how I might approach this more um, with my interest in figure sculpture. So what happens if I stop worrying about the tradition of these pots if I stop worrying about the kind of getting a simple impression and start saying, well, what, what would my head jug look like? What would my face jug look like? So I'm putting this brow in place. And And then some of them have actual uh, ears, so we can put we can put an ear in if we want. I'm just going to clear out that area there a little bit, using the end of the of the needle tool here. And so there we have some rather heavy browed um, eyes. And now let's work on a nose. Let's see what we can get with a nose here. So. And we can just put it up there and see what we think. That's kind of interesting. I mean, that works as a nose. Um, maybe we can make it a little bit uh, shorter and a little little wider. Maybe let's go for a little wider nose. But again, these forms that I've seen are not complicated. They're not um, particularly anatomically studied or accurate. Um, they're just uh, they're just kind of put on there. So. I think I'm going to try to stick to that approach for this first effort. And this will look more like some of the um, original face jugs. So a little scoring, a little slipping, and then I'm going to put that nose right on there. And if I want, I can narrow this down here. And then there you go. So I can, I, I don't have to do anything about nostrils, but I can if I want. So I'll keep that in mind a little later on. I'll, I'll return. I could put a little angle in here uh, and just by pushing up a little bit, maybe give it a little sense of that. And let's, let's get some mouth, uh, some lips in place here. Um, 
And I might do for that is again, we're just going to put some clay on. We'll make a rather large mouth. And uh, so after the mouth, we can decide whether we're going to put teeth in or not. And the other thing that we might want to consider is ears. Those are optional, I think. And some of the, some of these pots have ears, some do not. I might try some here. Um, so now I'm just going to put some, push this into place here. Just trying to get, remember with joining, you have the scoring, the slipping, and then the pressing is really important. So I'm pressing these lips in. And then um, get some bottom lips on there. And I'm going really fast. I might slow this down um, if I weren't making a film for you. But it's nice to um, try to get this as concise as possible. So I'm just going to put some one more coil in here for another lip. Uh, this is not how I make lips when I'm making a sculpture of the face, but it is very much what I see when I look at the original face jugs. So I thought we might just stick with that. And uh, so you can see right now, I've, I've, I've made it so the mouth is open. Kind of like that. And we'll work on some details here. We've got ears to do, maybe some teeth. Um, teeth will be coming up in just a moment. Um, but let's let's work on a few other items here. Um, if we wanted, let's let's work on some ears. Let's try that. So um, the ears are quite exaggerated. Sometimes they're just like um, these these bars that kind of go on like that. Uh, you just see the, the ear going on like that. I might have to um, alter that a little bit. Let me see what I can come up with here. I'm going to just angle them a little bit here. Um, um, put that on there. That might be a little small so I can get it a little bit bigger. Something like that. A little bit more play to work with. Soft here, but see what we get. And personally, again, I'm kind of it's hard for me to stay away from my own sculptural kind of ideas. But one idea I have is I always make ears of different sizes. I like a small ear and a large ear. So this would be along those lines. You can see that the ears are slightly different size there. Um, I also want to just clean up a little bit here. I've got a little bit of kind of rant, errant slip here. I don't want to fill in that area so much. So I'm just going to clear that out carefully. Same here. Just, just clean that up just a little bit. And then let's get some ears on here. So I'll score the side of the piece here. You can see me scoring and a little slip and I can actually uh, join right now this is kind of the shape of a pepper or maybe a little pear or something that's kind of odd shaped little piece. I'm gonna as I put it on I'm gonna shape it into an ear-ish looking thing so I'll push it in and over like that and I can kind of shape it that way. So it's a little, little more sculpted, not too much. There's an ear. If I can clean that up a little bit, like that. There's an ear on there. And I'll just get one on the other side.
and get some slip on there. And so now there might be a little more detail to go on the eyes than we've done here. And as I push this in, I see that I am compressing the shape of the piece a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of compressing in the sides there. And if I want to keep it more rounded, I can round it out a little bit more. There's a couple of things we need to remember. I'll show you how to pull that roundness back out of it in just a moment. Let's play with a few other ideas. So now we have, we're making some progress here. We have a face, we have ears here. And then I will add, I'm going to just kind of give it a little bit of a bug eye look there, which I've seen in some of the pieces. Now those are kind of staring straight out at you. If I put, you know, I could have given it a cross-eyed look or made him look off to one side, but that's given it a bit of a bug eyed look. Um, now uh, there's a couple other things that are possible. Um, I'm going to worry about cleaning it up more when it gets drier, but I think um, maybe we could look into the idea of a kind of pseudo nostril kind of look here just by pushing in a little bit here. Not too much. I don't want to get too anatomically fussy here, which is my, my tendency, so I've got to watch myself. But there's a, a start there. And then what I want to do is show you, I don't know if these are dry enough, but I'll bring them back into the picture here. Um, what I have here are some teeth made out of white, whiter clay. It's not porcelain clay, but it is a kind of white clay body. And these teeth um, have been drying a little bit, maybe not enough to hold up, but we'll see. And um, what we're going to do is see if we can get some teeth in in this mouth. I don't know if this will work or not because the teeth might be too fragile yet, but um, we'll see. And the idea here in uh, the original um, face jugs, teeth were uh, done by um, they were they were created by uh, either making them in porcelain, letting them dry like this, and then pushing them into the clay, or um, they would take old porcelain plates that were broken, and they would um, put the broken pieces of plate in. So I'm going to just start with the lower teeth here, maybe kind of a start in the middle. And what I want to do is I want to push them in, but I, I want to, don't want to pierce. I want to be careful not to pierce. So that looks like it maybe broke. So I think that'll stay. But let me see. I'm going to break off a little bit of this so I don't have to go so deep. And we'll put another one in here. Like that. That one's also breaking a little bit. I think I'm pushing too hard. So causing a little bit of a breakage there. Let's see if I can get that together. So, and I'll put in a little bit of a canine experience here. Break off the end a little bit. One. And two. So that's the low, that's enough of the lower teeth, perhaps. Um, we'll see. And then I'm going to do the upper teeth here. Because I want them to go a little bit over the, the lower teeth like that. So you can see I'm just kind of doing the dental work here. I'm just pushing these into place. Don't worry if you get a little bit of the darker clay on there, you can scrape that off very carefully. You want to be, go very careful when it when it's drier. So, and then we'll put in a couple of canines. If I leave them hanging down a little bit lower, 
he might look a little kind of vampire-ish. As it is, he's looking pretty impressive there. Let's get that in there. Oh, I think I just broke that. Maybe not. So there you go. There's the teeth for this fellow. And one thing, again, this is breaking out of the mold here a little bit um, of the more traditional form, but I sometimes like to put um, an earring hole in one of the ears. If I put a little hole in one of the ear lobes, if I want, I can later hang something from that, put a little metal ring in there or something just for interest. So we're getting pretty far along here. The only thing we need now is um, a, a finger ring for holding the piece. Um, so um, I can make that. And I don't think I'll, I'll I won't pull a handle in the traditional like, like you're making a, a contemporary mug. I'm just gonna make a, um, just a kind of tapered handle here in this really simple direct way and here we go i'm just gonna go like this so i'm making a carrot shape as you can see this clay is quite stiff and that's much more than i need for this pot so i'm going to just take some of that off and let's see this might be this might be all I need. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna round this a little bit on the top here. Then this next move, it's a round, as you can see, it's kind of a round carrot shape. But if I take it and I go like this and throw it down, now it's a half round. And so I can take this and uh, make a ring from that, I think. So what I'm gonna do is line this up so I can see I can see where the face is. So if I put the handle on here, then what you'll see is that the handle is immediately opposite the face. So if I put my finger in it to lift it up and drink, um, maybe they would drink whiskey out of these things. I don't know. It's a possibility. Just pick this up. And so what I'm going to do is they would drink water. Um, certainly in the fields, they would use these for carrying and storing and drinking water, but they would also use them for alcohol sometimes. So now I'm just putting that, I'm just joining the handle at the very top here. And then I'm gonna very carefully kind of coax it into just a little finger ring here. I wanna go slow and careful. I don't want to cause cracking and then Score a little bit on both sides. And we'll just see if we can't put that right in there. And see how that looks. That looks pretty good. You can see it forming here. Just looking down and trying to get a sense of even joining there. I'm going to get a nice joined form there. And then the finger ring component of it, I'm just going to push that last bit right into place. Get a nice join. And that would be a face jug with its little ring in the back for lifting and drinking. Um, and I think the old, I've managed to hold back from getting too fully contemporary here. Uh, I've kept it pretty direct and simple and more traditional. And if you, if you, type in a Google search and say face jugs, you can actually see um, 
lots of examples of these and get a sense of what, what they looked like. And you can choose as always in these assignments to follow the, um, the more traditional options and, and traditional aesthetic, or you can um, go your own way a little bit and be inspired by, but come up with your own, um, your own approach. So all those are possible. There's one last thing we wanna do, and that is right now it's just a ball. Remember, it hasn't been, um, it has not been opened up. So this is a big trapped ball of air and this will lead us to, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just reach in here and I'm cutting out the, that part of the, of the spout. And hopefully I'll be able to get this out of the, pod if I can coax it up to come up with me here bring it up see maybe even a different tool might help me bring this up so I want to pull this plug forward get it to come out of the piece there we go I think I've got it and there we go that's most of it and then we'll just clean it up a little bit and now now there's lots of smoothing and, and I can really make this, this lip quite precise. When it dries up a little bit more, I'll come in and I'll smooth um, and shape and even out a lot of the kind of rough surfaces, but I don't need to worry about it when the clay is still this wet. The one thing I can do now that I've opened it up, which is kind of fun, is let me just uh, give you an example here. We'll bring this back to seeing all of the pots that we have here. And I'll come around and show you this last kind of technique here. Um, you've got your, your piece here. And you just, this is now open. I've smoothed it out pretty nicely. And I just, when I push the ears on, the sides collapse a little bit, so I should be able to, just by blowing into it like that, it, it makes it more of a balloon. So there you go, there's the, um, there's the finished, jug head there. Now we're going to go back here and start uh, the second piece with a different idea. And this idea is now more contemporary. What would I do if I were making something more along the lines of my sculptural uh, ideas about a face, a human face. So here's another, another form. This one was not made with the patty cake method. This was thrown on a wheel. And you can see it's it's gotten a little bit stiff in the sun here. It's, it's been out in the outdoors. So what I'm going to start with is I can I can just round it a little bit there and make the, the bottom just a little rounder. It's kind of a nice technique to round off the bottom. And then a little stiff, but let me see if I've got enough. See what happens when I hit it here. See if I can get it to yeah, there we go. So I've, made an indentation there. Do another one here. Already I like um, that this one's higher and this one's lower. So I seem to have found where the eyes go. And uh, there's the, the nose is right here. So um, I think we're, we're doing quite well here. So now let's work on the eye area here. I'm just gonna kind of Use my hand here, and it is quite stiff. So, and already you can see I'm shaping it pretty dramatically here, and uh, so I'm violating. Uh, as with this one, the the round of the pot is maintained the whole time, uh, but with this one I have gone ahead and really pushed into. Um, the, the pot and change the shape, which is already a sign of uh, perhaps a, a sculptural bias. And there's gonna be a mouth here, right? So I'm gonna just push that in right like that. Get a start on that. And I guess we could start with the lips and I'll just talk to you about some ideas of lips. So we know there's gonna be some lips put here. And so I'm gonna, and I'll do this quite differently. And you'll, you can actually with this one here to compare, you'll be able to see that. So I'm just going to start working on some lips here. 
And it's a little tricky. I want to be careful because it's quite easy to do a good job on something like this. And then you bump it around while you're working. And then you got to do it over and over again. So I've got some clay here to play with. And uh, so I'm going to just start by. Slipping that, getting ready for the arrival. Of, and I, I just am really interested in this shape here. I'm just going to see how round, dish shaped I can make this. Just going to get that nice and round. And we'll see what that becomes. I like that kind of roundness there. Okay. And then here, here's my first lip. And I'll start with the lower lip because I find that upper lips kind of slightly overlap the lower lip. So I'm just going to start with that. And when I'm making a lip, what I'll do is I'll make a, a kind of a, a tapered on both ends kind of shape. You can see that that's tapered on both ends there. And, um, and that would be the lower lip. It's kind of big, but we could have a big mouth piece here, just like the other one kind of compare it. And I'm going to kind of go in a reverse approach here, and you'll see what I mean here. I'm going to score and slip this, put it in place, and then I'm going to do the reverse of what I did on the other one in that I'm going to leave the inside of this coil alone. I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to smooth that out or do anything with that. I'm just going to work out here. And because a human lip is actually part of the face. It's completely joined into the face. It's not just a, like a piece of spaghetti or something that's laid on the surface. It's actually really integrated into the rest of the face. So what you see when you're looking at a lip is you see the opening and this lovely perfect curve right here. And so that's what I'm going to leave. And I'm not going to touch it because that makes a natural really nice curve all by itself. And I can work on the outside as much as I want. Now let me clean that up a little bit, that tool. So I'm working on that, just getting that lip in into the body of the pot there, like that. So you can see, and as we get close, once we get the top lip in, you'll see how it looks. Um, that's good. And then I'll do another lip here. Again, I'm going to make a. I'm making here a tapered coil again. See that, and um, making a little fuller on the top here, and then I'm going to score it again. And again, I'm going to be careful not to touch the inside of the lip. And you'll see right away that this starts to look very much like a real human mouth. And I'm going to just wipe that. I'm going to wipe that into the form of the pot here. And it's getting quite close. I kind of want it to, if I, if I leave it that way, I can, but if I, I won't be able to get any teeth in it, but maybe it doesn't need any teeth. So I can kind of do that. It's got a kind of nice little smirk going on there. So there is there's a mouth, the start of a mouth anyway. 
And so now we can start looking at the eyes. Let's put an eye here. And so for that, we can start thinking about eyes in a different kind of light here. So for instance, We, we start with the idea that an eye is a ball. So and it's a little bit of an elongated ball, sort of in the shape of a grape. So this is your eye. And if, you're, um, if your eye bumps into something, it could be bad for your eye. Um, your eye is soft and gelatinous. And so um, anything that, that runs into it would smash it. And we're really dependent on our eyes as, a, as an animal, we use our eyes a lot. And so what you see is in, the, in a human face, in your own face, your brow and your, your nose ridge here, the brow and the nose ridge uh, and the cheekbone are all things that protect your eye from smashing. So that's what I'm gonna be thinking about. I mean, that's why it goes into this indentation here is because the indentation allows for the cheekbone, the brow and the nose ridge and all of that protects the softness of your eye because as a species, that's probably one of the number one things we rely on is our sight. So it's really well protected uh, physiologically. So we slip that, we slip that. And I'm just gonna push in an eyeball. Just kind of push that in to start with. And then what we're thinking about is a couple of things, Put some tools here to work with. So when you're working with an eye, what you want to think about is that your eye is all related to that soft ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig in here, but as I move the tool, I'm moving it up and I'm moving it down and I'm curving it along the, the, along the lines of an eye. Of, of that ball, keeping that gelatinous round kind of grape size ball in mind so that what I get is not only do I get a kind of ball shape here, but the lids, the upper lid and the lower lid are determined, the shape is completely determined by the eyeball itself. So it's the, this, this, this little flap of skin that is the eyelid rests on the ball and that's where it gets its shape from it's just sitting right on the ball so we're going to emphasize that and then what happens at the corners is kind of interesting i want to take a little bit of this off if i can get in here and maybe cut a little bit more of that and then what happens is um, right here is that where the lid, I want to bring this down. I want to kind of, kind of make a big heavy lidded shape here. So I'm just pushing this down and I've got, this is a little, um, this is an old paintbrush handle that I've carved, um, just carved in this little curve so that I have a kind of round shape. And that's very helpful for this. Um, you could try that, or you can sculpt it with just a straighter wooden tool, certainly. So that's looking interesting. I don't know if that's exactly where we'll finish up at the start. And then I'm gonna take this here. I wanna kind of clean up the bottom right here, just clean this up. And I'm gonna follow this along and I want to tuck. I want to tuck the lower lid underneath the upper lid. The upper lid comes down slightly over the lower lid there. And if possible, I want to avoid smushing the mouth that I've already put in. So that's looking pretty good. So. And if I'm not happy with the expression of the mouth, I can change it. I can 
move the lips around and alter how, how the expression um, comes across. Um, here, I'm just going to work on this just a little bit more. Keep this kind of rounded. And then something happens interesting over here. Right in this corner here, what we can do, maybe this is the best, best, is whereas over in this corner of the eye, the upper lid kind of lays over the lower lid. In this corner is a tear duct. And so that kind of gets to the end and then just takes a downward curve there and opens up a little bit into a little round kind of tear, teardrop shaped roundness there, something like that. So that's a start. And then one of the things you can see, if you look at the mouth, you see how you can see that, that line, that smile line there, because it's an opening, it's a crevice. And that kind of, um, that kind of aspect of sculpture is really interesting, is that the, where you have these um, deep uh, indents into the form, it goes dark because light can't get in there, so it looks darker. And so that's how you make a sense of darkness. And then with a, with an, uh, I, a pupil and an iris, um, you can cut them out. Now, they're never a full circle like they are in our, this, this one has this kind of bug-eyed look, which is quite traditional. But in, uh, in this one here, I'm going to make it a little bit more um, naturalistic. And so what I'm doing, is I'm just going to cut out some of this there. I don't want to cut it all the way out, otherwise my my pot will leak, and I don't want it to leak. So I'm just going to make it a little bit like that. And the other thing that we'll see is that it's not fully round. It's round on the on the sides. But at the top, the lids go over it so that it flattens out at the top. You don't see a circle completely of the pupil or the iris there. And then another nice little trick that you can do is you can just leave a little bit of um, clay, in this case, just bring the clay up and just leave a little bit kind of featured sticking up. And what that does is it catches the light and that gives you an impression of light glistening off your the kind of the liquid of your eye there. So it's just a little bit of a visual optic optical kind of illusion there. Just a little spot in there that sticks out and gives it a little sense of a highlight. And then for this part of the eye, which is kind of important, you don't want you don't want to draw a line on the eye. You want to actually follow the eyeball around here to get a realistic feeling of the lid over the eye. You just do that little linear kind of addition, both on the bottom and on the top. You just learn. little line. And again, as with all clay work, um, I can leave the final refinements um, to when everything is more dried out that I can approach it. So there's an, there's one eye and a, a mouth. We're making progress here. And I want to start working on the nose here a bit. So I'm going to score this because I need the nose to come forward to hang out over the mouth. We want the nose forward and outward, protruding out over where the lips are. So I scratch that out a bit, grab some additional clay, and we'll see how this goes. We'll put a little bit of uh, liquid here, a little bit of slip. And 
going to just push this in and see what's going on. I'm just going to blend it into the existing ridge and try to leave a little bit more up at the front here. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to push this down and we're just shaping And as I work here, I'm thinking again about this lovely shape that I made here with this. And perhaps I'll just keep that going because now what I'm doing is part of me is making a very realistic looking face, but another part of me is saying, hey, what if I, if I find some kind of abstract expression here that I could kind of play with? So that's where I'm going now with this indent, this curved indent here. Um, and so that's what's happening there. And then this might follow along the lines of the more realistic nose shape here. Get more of a nostril shape here. Bulb of the nose. So. Just kind of shape that, work that. And this might work here. Start with a little, little large for the size of shape. So maybe I'll come and finish up my idea a little bit this way. Again, I want to be careful. I do not want to pierce the actual pot because I want it to hold water or whiskey or who knows what. So on this side, it's looking rather abstract, kind of getting the outline of a nose though still. And then as we, on this side here, see it looks rather abstract there. And then go over here, it's looking rather um, almost uh, like a caricature of some kind, sort of anime little figure. I'll put a little something here. So you can see where we're at now. What we need is a couple of things. We need another eye, we need some ears, and then we need a handle of some kind. So let's, um, let's work on that. So the eye is actually going to be a little surprising, perhaps. Um, if you look here, I'm going to show you how I might one of the things I love about uh, working this way is that there comes a point where you've suggested so much the other way that you don't need to do much here. You just make a little bit of an, a mark here. And because the, the rest of it is so realistic, this actually ends up taking very little to suggest an eye. So that looks quite mu very much like, you know, um, it could it could be an eye there. If so I can I can play with it. I've done that. If I don't like that so much and I'm not sure I do, maybe I want to try something a little bit different. So I'm gonna put some flip in there to make sure I don't trap any air. And then I'm going to push some clay back in, smooth it back in. And now it's going to just basically erase that. I liked it. It was all right. But it felt a little bit hesitant and a little bit uh, the wrong scale. Too large, actually, it felt to me, believe it or not. So I'm just going to put that back in and try again. So let's try just kind of a circle 
like that. Let's try one with that little bit. And then I'm going to play with a little bit, change the shape, maybe turn it more into a crescent and make it smaller, not getting quite small. So let me see. And I can get in there and shape it, sculpt it. And that. Pretty much is what I'm looking for. I might want to just put a little bit of clay there, kind of imply a lid. Like that. And that feels about right to me. Very subtle, very um, quite a contrast to the other side. And I do a lot of that where I'm I'm contrasting one side with the other. So let's see. There we go. So now this is feeling a little big, but to compress that down a little bit. And see what I get a little bit more of a squint there, a little bit of a narrower narrowing of the eye. Here I'm gonna work this out again. Let's see if I can bring this out. And then I have the ears to do yet. Still working on the eye here. And I'll work on ears. So, see it's making some real progress here. And let me work on some, some ears. And then I need a handle and then we're pretty much done for this one. So I'm going to exaggerate that scale issue even more. So a little ear and a big ear. It's a little ear. Let's really get that edit quite large. So, again, I'm making these kind of they're shaped like you know, pears, figs, peppers. And so, that one, that one. I like that. Okay, so now. And since the ears are going to stick out, you want to make sure you get a very good joint so they don't get knocked off sometime in the future after everything is fired. So you really want to score and slip well, and you really want to press it into place to ensure a good, a good fit for the ear. And again, ears are kind of optional. I see lots of examples of, of these face jugs with no ears at all or ears that are looking kind of like uh, just big bars, just, just bars. So I'm just going to push it in. Lots of pushing is going on, but the 
as I do it, I'm smoothing in towards the front, but I'm leaving the backside pretty much unaddressed, meaning that, and you could, you could add details. You can make it a more realistic looking mirror if you wish. I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna leave it just as it is. And uh, let's, keep, uh, let's keep on some of that. And then I have the, the other one and you'll see what I mean about scale here. I'm just going to work on this one. Um, it's a much smaller ear. Let's score, score and slip this as well. And then this pressing is really important because, and as I'm doing it, I'm, I know, I think about shaping the ear as well as compressing the clay so that it joins really well. And then I'm gonna just work that clay right into the piece itself where I don't want it to smooth the front end in and the back end just lays over. And then something that I often do is kind of, kind of emphasize the lobe. I'll show you that um, where you can see it on the bigger ear here, where I just come in and I, I come into this section right here at the bottom of the ear and I just slice it in and pull it around, pull it around here. So it makes a kind of more pronounced lobe look there. And then there we have much of our, um, of, the, of the sculpting is complete on this piece. We have the big eye there. You see the kind of smiling mouth and the very small abstract with the small ear, big ear. Um, and that kind of completes the facial components. All we need now, I've got the, the indent at the bottom so it sits on a ring. All I need now is a handle again, a, a kind of a, a jug ring or a handle on the back. So I can do the, the way I did it last time. Um, or I could pull a handle, but I don't think I'm gonna pull, I think I wanna pull this, this one. I think I'm gonna do something similar, but maybe with a little texture and I'll show you that here. So I'm gonna, so maybe work a little bit larger. little bit thicker. Here's my handle shape. And again, when you're attaching something functional like this, like a handle, I want to make sure I want to get right across from the nose. I want to make sure that I'm seeing um, that I'm lining up appropriately. I'm going to throw it down again like I did before. And that gives me uh, the half round effect. And then I'm going to score here. Again, making sure it's immediately opposite the nose. And I'm gonna put another ring on this one. Maybe not so much an exaggerated handle. On some of the pieces I was showing you earlier, the handles were put instead of, I used um, the handles as a place to work almost as ears. So the handles became ears for the pieces. So here we go. I'm uh, attaching this since this play is really soft, I don't really need to score the handle part of it because it's very soft and the piece is kind of stiff. So I can just put that handle right in there. Just work it in, compress it, really kind of get it in place. I'm going to clean this part up a little bit. And then I'm going to just bring this around. Again, I'm going to kind of gently work it. I don't want it to cause any, I don't want to cause any cracking. I don't want to shape it any. And I've got a sense, it's not quite in the right form yet. You can see there. And then pressing the handle into place here, making sure it's nicely lined up. 
and then and, and making it a, a ring, kind of a finger ring, again like I did on the last one. And if you if if for some reason you go astray, if you if it gets too out of shape, too rough, you don't like it, you can just start again. You can cut this one off and go again. I think this might be okay. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. The rule with handles and uh, finger rings and things like this is that the, the less fussing, the better. It's hard to stop, but that is, in general, a good guideline. So let's take a look at this now. Round there. Let's go get over here. So there is the finished piece with the little finger ring at the back face. And that'll that'll work fine for this little one. So the example here, you can see if we take these two and, and put them side by side. Uh, this uh, first one that I ex demonstrated is much more along traditional lines. This is what some of the original um, pots looked like here. Um, this one right here. And um, that's much more of a, a traditional kind of very direct, very, um, and, and it gives you a lot of permission to play, be very childlike and spontaneous in your work. And then if you want to get more involved in a kind of more naturalistic and abstracted form, you can play along these lines. And there's lots of places in between. So that uh, gives you a good range of ideas of what you can do. I will have one more uh, video at least where I show you how to work on a larger scale with the um, coil building technique. Um, and so that's coming up. And for now, we've got our little characters here. That gives us uh, our finished demonstration on our face jugs. I think we want to put an earring uh, slot somewhere. Uh, I like doing that. So maybe in this case, I'll put it in the small ear. I'll just put that right over on this side here. And I'm just going to push the back end of the of my needle tool in and make a little bit of an earring hole. And so that gives us the finish of, of this one here, little face jug. So more traditional, and this is made with the uh, kind of two round slabs or the sort of patty cake technique very direct very simple very quick be a good way you can make two or three of these and just practice faces and play to get ready for maybe making a larger coil built one and then this is an example of playing more um, with the sculptural qualities of the human head and you can see in this case i kept true to the shape of the pot it's all very much the roundness of the pot in this case the first thing i did was pound it into the pot started shaping it more along the lines of perhaps a, a, a human head or even preparing it for this kind of beautiful um, kind of scallop shape here, this, this deep curved indent that's very abstract, this kind of ring. So lots of possibilities um, and I hope you enjoy. So uh, until uh, we get to the next video, stay safe and make art.